Okay, that means there's going to be a lot more uh, space taken up by this, but that's okay. Compression technology is, works wonders and miracles. Okay, so, um, yep, now I'm recording. Um, welcome to another lesson with me. I'm going to be going over kind of uh, a couple of things. So first on my docket, I have... Uh, I'll be covering a little bit about nano gangs, like how they operate. I'm not a nano ganger by heart, but I know the fundamentals of it, so I can like kind of give my um, not professional expertise. I'm not a professional nano ganger. I can give my kind of outlook on it. Um, I'll also be going over how to hunt targets and um, kind of what a fleet fight will look like. Um, so from the perspective of, of a brawling fleet. Um, that way so you guys know like how to properly be in a fleet. Okay, so looking at nano gang. So we have right here, we have light tackle, anti-tackle, DPS, and support. Now, if you aren't familiar, these are kind of the four archetypes of what a nano gang is comprised of. Um, I'll, I'll go down the list of what each of these archetypes do. So that way um, when you get into a nano gang and you're asking okay like what what do i do what can i do you're, you're not stuck there thinking about what you can do you, you already know you have these four different roles try to fill one of those four roles now the ratios to roles that's that's kind of hard to say but we'll start by looking at what these roles do and then you can kind of make your own opinion on like how many of each you should have in a nano gang composition okay um so to start let's actually go before i even start with these things here let's start on the origins of nano gangs um what, what it means so a nano gang is typically light or kite um have a nano fiber in the lows that's where they get their name from. Um, they usually use micro warp drives. Uh, in fact, I, I can't think of any nano gang that doesn't use micro warp drives as it's like uh, primary primary propulsion module. So they're going to be using micro warp drives. They're going to have nano fibers in the low. Have nano fibers. Um, they're going to be light. They're going to be kitey. They're not going to have a lot of DPS not a lot of DPS. Um, they rely a lot on range and they're going to consist of you know usually usually less than 15 people okay usually that doesn't mean you can't have a nano gang that's bigger it just means that you're not going to see nano gangs with big sizes in Nullsec, Pochfin, wherever you see them, right? They're kind of relying on that mobility, and if you're fast and mobile, um, comms are a little bit more distracting, and so you have to like be on peak communication. It doesn't facilitate larger groups. Ultimately, if you have a small group, it's more conforming to a small group, uh, uh, more conforming to be in a nano gang than into a large brawl fleet. Uh, the reason you use nano gang is to counter the blob. So this, think of the nano gang counters, counters, and put down the blob. So what is the blob? That can mean a lot of things. It's big null sec groups, right? We're talking like uh, 50 people or more. Like, you know. It's to counter the blob. They're typically in like big fleet formations. And they, uh, what is it called? Have low IQ, uh, relies on the FC, okay? So the nano gang traditionally exploits the fact that they have a lower IQ. That's not to say that blobbers are not intelligent. That's just to say the average piloting skill of a blob pilot is not going to be as high as a nano ganger, right? The blobbers will generally rely on their numbers, their critical mass, the amount of DPS they're putting out 
to overcome the Nano Gang. The Nano Gang has to, in turn, rely on their uh, speed, their range control, and their better flight habits, I guess you could say. Their better flight habits, better ability to fly on an individual level in order to counter these guys on the right, okay? So the Nano Gang is supposed to try and counter it. But really when I say they counter it, it's not saying that you're going to take 15 guys and kill all 50 people in the big null set group. The Nano Gang is more like you're going to fly them around and when the blob starts trickling in, you pick off a few ships and then you leave, right? That's the win condition for a Nano Gang, getting a couple of kills and then bouncing, not losing everything. The blob's win condition is completely wiping out the Nano Gang or getting them out of their territory. So, that's kind of like what Nano is in a nutshell. Let's get into the roles. So I have here the four roles of Nano Gangers and I've divided them out here. As you can see, we got Light Tackle, Anti Tackle, DPS, and Support. So people are going to confuse these right here, DPS and Anti Tackle. Like these are not the same. They're not, okay? So don't, don't confuse DPS and Anti Tackle. There's a big difference. I'll get into that. So let's start off with what light tackle is. Light tackle, they're usually very small ships. Um, no, they are very small ships. They have to be because they're light. So we're talking frigates, usually frigates. Uh, you can have destroyers. It is possible like draugers can kind of fill in that role, I could imagine. Um, you can also have... Uh, Boosters. Assault frigates. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I'm lumping them in with the frigates. Um, you can have boosters. You can have bubblers. They kind of count as light tackle, right? So small ships, frigates, destroyers. They're not there for DPS. They're there to maintain range control and uh, hold ships in place, right? So the idea is like you use your light tackle to scram down bigger targets, make sure they can't catch up to your fleet, or make it so that like you isolate a ship and you know have the oppor like give an opportunity for your DPS to kill that bigger ship, right? So they're holding ships in place, they're maintaining range control for your other guys. So in this example scenario, give me a second, okay? So let's say you have over here, right? Your enemy, they have light tackle, right? And they're coming at your fleet. Your fleet is over here. And you got some uh, long range battle cruiser DPS. It's really doing numbers on their cruisers over here. Because battle cruisers, cruisers, you know, battle cruisers are going to win. But the light, light tackle on the enemy side, it's going in a beeline straight to your battle cruiser, right? So when I say maintains range control right here, this uh, maintaining range control, right? This light tackle could be 40 kilometers off, right? That's coming straight for your battle cruiser. Well, what you need to do, if that's the case, is take your own light tackle and clamp them down. And then while they're clamped down, you'll have another ship. Um, I'll get into what ship you'll use to take out that light tackle. You have another ship uh, shoot at it from a longer distance, right? That's the idea behind light uh, screening is the terminology for this. Okay, so your your light tackle will also provide screening opportunities. Um, let me just write that down here. Screens enemy light tackle, and that should really be about it as far as the job of light tackle. Don't be deceived by the name Light Tackle. It is actually a very, very hard job to fill. Like, you have to be very experienced to be um, a Light Tackle ship. It's very high skill ceiling, very low skill floor. So you, you don't have to have a lot to be in a Light Tackle position, but if you are in a Light Tackle position, you better know your ship, right? So, screens, enemy, Light Tackle. 
In the same vein, you have your support ships. I'm going to work light tackle first, then support, then we'll get into anti-tackle and DPS. So in your support, you basically just fills in uh, utility for your fleet, okay? Now this is super important because as I mentioned before, you, you have range control as like one of your central tenets of being in a nano gang, right? So if you're trying to range control, you want dampeners, uh, make sure that they can't lock onto you um, at a certain range, right? They're going to have disruptors for tracking, right? Because your, your ships are fast, they rely on transversal to not get killed. You use tracking disruptors to prevent the, the enemy fleet from just straight up annihilating you, right? So you, you got dampeners, you got disruptors, Maybe you can fill in some newts, right? Maybe there's some active tank ships that you need to like newt down. You know, basically the support fills in like any of these utility slots you need in your fleet, especially when you're starting to consider like what the enemy will bring into your into their ranks to counter you, right? So you have to kind of be flexible with what support you bring, but generally speaking, it's going to be range control dampeners or disruptors for tracking. Okay, so support, usually frigates, just because frigates are expendable and they're fast. Uh, you don't have to make them like s neutered to keep up with your fleet, right? And they can get in and out. Makes, makes it helpful. Okay, let's get into anti-tackle. So anti-tackle is almost exclusively cruisers. Okay. Uh, the thing about cru uh, cruisers is they are a really good platform for getting frigates out of the way, especially if they have like tiny, uh, tiny weapons. So they're going to have like, uh, what is it? High application weapons. Okay. So, uh, I'm not going to say high application DPS. That'll confuse you if I go into DPS. Okay. So anti tackle. It's cruisers with high application. The Exemplary, formerly exemplary, uh, anti-tackle ship was the Orthrus. It's got long points, and it has rapid light missile launchers, and it has pretty good speed. So you would generally use an Orthrus as anti-tackle because it has the ability to take out frigates relatively simply, right? The idea is that while your light tackle is engaging with the enemy light tackle, you're going to be using your anti-tackle to kill uh, enemy light tackle. Um, yeah, so we're, you use... S sorry, hmm? Sandman. Uh, I've never used an Orphrus for anti-tackle because I've, I've only used the ship in a, in a PVE. <laughs> Have you got a setup for a, an Orphrus to use as a um, anti-tackle? Um, yeah. So what you would have is rapid light missile launchers in the high, warp disruptor, generally faction in the mid with a micro warp drive, uh, shield hardeners, and a extra large ancillary shield booster, if I'm mis not mistaken. Oh. And Some people either run straight buffer, XLSB, or uh, point yeah. and scram. There's defensive scram. Yeah. Uh, and then in the lows, it's going to be like double nanofiber damage. No, no, sorry. One nanofiber, two ballistic controls, and a damage control, I think, right? Usually not, the... not for shield. Um, Might as well do dual nano, dual damage. Yeah, okay. Dual nano, dual damage, uh, ballistic controls. So that's generally what an Orthrus would look like for anti tackle. I, you know, I'm just spouting it off the top of my head. I'm not like plugging this into Pof, uh, Pypha. It's not hard to find anti tackle Orthruses on Z Kill, though. A lot of people use them for that purpose. They're kind of a dime a dozen as far as like Orthruses go. Another ship option would be like the Vedmac. I prefer the Vedmac. It's about a third of the price of an Orthrus right now. It does the same job. Osprey Navy is a solid one. Yeah, Osprey Navy is another great anti tackle ship. Uh, there's a lot of options, right? But generally speaking, they are cruisers with high application they kill enemy light tackle and they kind of cruise on the edge of 
point range. So generally speaking, they're going to be operating at around 20 to 40 kilometers, right? Depending on like what your point is, your bonus is, etc. So they're going to be kind of skirting around at that point range, right? Okay. Uh, anything else I missed for anti-tackle, sleazy, or I, th I think that's pretty much it, right? There's not really much. Yeah. Much else. No, any any more will get you deep in the hole. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into DPS. So you may be asking, okay, well these cruisers, they're doing damage and they're killing things, right? Like. Why aren't they the DPS? Well, quite simply, if you have an anti-tackle ship, right, you'll notice something really quick. They have only about 300 to 400 DPS per ship. You might be able to get a little bit higher. You might be able to, or you might have a little bit lower. It doesn't really matter. They don't have a lot of DPS. They're really exclusively for killing frigates because, let's face it, if you're up against a fleet and it has some form of logi, you're not going to be doing all too much with anti-tackle. So enter DPS. So DPS is generally battle cruisers or battleships, right? Uh, Macarials or nightmares are pretty good examples of what a battleship DPS would look like. Battle cruisers, you have there's a, a couple of options, but people, you know, split hairs about what is a good battle cruiser platform. Uh, to be honest. There's a couple. Drekovax with triple links is a pretty good solid option for DPS at decent ranges. Um, some people say Railgun Talos's are viable. I haven't really done that. Some people say that... Um, Broken uh, uh, Brutixes are right there with the Taloses. Yeah. Brutixes are actually... can actually do anti-tackle. Yeah. And well, yeah but, they're very, but they're very Tim Pot though, aren't they? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. They're very fragile. I'll say that. They're uncommon. Yeah, there, there are um, there are certain battle cruisers that you're you're not going to see a lot of. The reason being that they are uh, simply not fit for what you yeah. need them to do. Yeah, but like basically the DPS role, it's it's battle cruisers or battleships. They're going to operate at very long range very long range um talking 50 plus kilometers usually like already tornado type shit already materials god you're gonna make me nut. yeah so they're typically operating at long range and they need screening from the rest of the fleet and they need to have like the tracking that's why they. That's why they operate at such long ranges, but they have high DPSs. We're talking 500 plus, right? Things that will get cruisers off the field, or battle cruisers off the field, or even battleships off the field. Like it's possible, okay? So the idea is essentially this here's here's what your fleet composition will look like okay so you got your light tackle anti-tackle dps support so we'll we'll kind of like draw out what what your grid is going to look like if you have all four of these things together okay let's just move this up okay so if you have a grid right let's just imagine this is a top-down view of your grid and your enemy fleet is like all the way out here they got like some battleships, some cruisers. Maybe they have some light tackle of their own. Or maybe a battle cruiser here. And they're coming at you, right? I know I can draw that better. Whatever. Ugh. Sorry. I get the idea of silly use. I know, but I like my arrows looking clean, okay? It's not a clean arrow, but whatever. So they're coming at you, and you have your gang. So what your, your formation is going to look like is you're going to have your light tackle out front, right? Because they operate better when they have higher transversals, and they need to scram things, so they got to be close. 
So these guys are operating out front. Then a fair distance away, uh, you have your cruisers, your anti-tackle. They're going to be a couple, you know, about 20 kilometers away. Your anti-tackle's out there. And maybe out here you have your support ships. You might have a Mollus or a Kiris out here. Um, what I'll signify that is I'll give them a little chevron so that you know their support ships, okay? So they're out here. And then way, way, way out, you have your battleships. You know, doing your DPS, sniping the cruisers out. So as these guys are chasing you, and remember, you are mobile. So this entire time, like as they're chasing you, you're going out this way. Your guys are pushing out moving away from the enemy team and any stragglers that they have because they're not going to all have the same speed profile necessarily, right? Any stragglers they have, maybe this uh, frigate comes out and meets your guys like real close. He like gets real close to you guys. Well, then that's when you pick them off. So you take your anti-tackle ships and you shoot off these frigates. So the idea behind Nano Gang is that you're, you're picking off targets opportunistically as they're moving closer and closer towards you while you're kiting away and away from them okay that's essentially the essence of nano gang um there's a lot of nuance in how to fly nano gang uh at an individual level that's individual competencies that's something i can't really teach you on a microsoft paint presentation i can show you how to do that more realistically through videos and maybe through the test server but at the end of the day, it's not something I can demonstrate on paint. There is some good drawings and special bulletins. If you scroll up a little bit, Smokey posted a Imager album uh, called Eve Online Tackletics. If you go through that, it will give you an idea of like what your uh, what your fleet will be doing at an individual level. Okay, but. For the individual level, the competencies there, I am i don't really have the ability to get into that too much. It's just too tough for me to do it on Microsoft Paint. Uh, do I have any questions from you guys as far as like the, at least the idea of how a nano gang operates and the idea of like what you should be doing in a nano gang? Yeah, good. So just looking, go ahead, Mini. The, the best ships for a nano gang in are either Hurricanes, uh, Osprey navies, and the cheap, cheerful, and you can learn how to how to use them. And yeah. the, and the, I mean, for a hundred mil ship, you can't complain. Yeah, exactly. So, in fact, I'll I'll go down a list of like good nano gang ships, right? Here, let's let's do that. The Omen Navy, Osprey Navy. I meant to say Osprey Navy. Sure. Yeah, sorry. Hurricane fleet issues pretty good. The normal so hurricanes let's, let's pretty good. Stabber's pretty good. Anti tackle. You have the Osprey Navy. You have your both are nice. Yeah, the Omen Navy is also a good one. Yeah. Succubus, I guess, works. Succubus is brilliant. Anti tackle. Arbitrator mm -hmm. is actually pretty solid. Um, what else was I going to say? Pretty solid multi-purpose, multi-purpose boat there. Yeah, yeah. Ar Arbitrator is kind of it, it teeters the line between support and anti tackle. It it has utility and it has some anti tackle properties. So the Arbitrator is a good option if you're looking for a very very cheap ship. Uh, Vendmac is actually surprisingly like a very good one. Who? What else? Orthrus. Orthrus is like what people consider like the anti tackle ship. Uh, if you Versus go, fucking if good. you get past the price point. That's the thing about the Orthrus is it's gone up in price way too much. Yeah, whatever. And let me think, is there another one I'm missing? Yeah, Kane. Just a straight shield Kane with nano fit. I would consider the Hurricane to be a DPS ship rather than an anti-tackle ship, but I guess you can use it as an anti-tackle ship if you have auto cannons. Run over nano ships, not anti-tackle. Yeah, it's it's a good it's a good nano ship nice. for sure. So I'll say these are good like anti tackle ships right here. The Cinnable is pretty good. It's a good nano. It's quick. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to get like into it's, the it's a... obscure like side yeah. choices, right? Like these are ones that I would recommend to a, a new person, right? Like these are ones that are pretty simple, cut and dry. What you're supposed to do. Maybe the arbitrator is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, like these are ones that like a new bro can probably pick up pretty pretty easily, right? Yeah, the stabber is really good. Oh it's yeah, very yeah. Fast. stabber. Uh, maybe Vagabond as well. I don't know. It is, but it's a lot more... Uh... Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, Vagabond's quite expensive. You're talking, you know, 300 mil. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're it's looking at the Orthrus, you're talking about 400, 500 mil. Easily. I've been enough for a good fit. Yeah. Um... Yeah, let's, let's just leave it at that. I, I don't really want to get too into the weeds, right? So... Yeah. Would you use the arbitrator uh, uh, in a, in this situation to uh, like you do as uh, nooting out? Um, yes, actually, the arbitrator kind of fills in like two roles, right? Simultaneously, you both have the ability to take out like small ships and apply some utility. That that's why the arbitrator kind of teeters on the line, as I mentioned, between anti tackle and support because it has newt bonuses and and disruptor bonuses while simultaneously having uh, a fair amount of damage for anti-tackle, right? Uh, good tackle, but, uh, good tackle ships. So let's. I would also argue the Drekovac is up there too. Uh, Drekovac's more DPS. More DPS, but it's just as fast as the other cruisers are. I know, I know, but like a lot of ships are just as fast as the cruisers. I'd say the Drekovac Drek- isn't really focusing on small ships, it's focusing on the medium-ish ships, but eh. yep. I- I'd classify it DPS. It has a higher ceiling for how much damage it can do at longer ranges. Mm-hmm. So, light tackle. We're talking... What are we talking? We're talking retributions. Retributions are very solid. Just, just do all interceptors and like all asteroids. You can use all of them. Some of them are better than others. I'd say the retribution is probably the gold standard for the Stiletto. Well, that uh, the assault frigates, not for interceptors. Ram jag. If you can't tell me that ain't some well, people class don't, A shit. The people don't people don't really use ram jags as as the. Nano the people you're like, fighting usually yeah do. the people you're fighting use ram jags the people yeah. that y- y- like you <laughs> are not going to be using a ram jag in a nano game not good uh garmer garmer is a very garmer. solid option garmer is a brilliant light tackle and yeah. also um the daredevil, daredevil yeah. yeah and uh boosters and then surprise surprise uh, boosters. surprise spam. For a faction ship, the Daredevil's a, a cracking uh, light tackle. A carries. I'd put carries into support. No, the fuck? Uh, yeah, it has a couple C, like sensor dams, but its main gig is tackle. If you're bringing a carries to a fight, right, you're going to be using it to damp your enemies to reduce their range. <laughs> They're more for range control. Its other bonus is tackle. I guess. It has a scram and point tackle 15% per level. I guess, like, but I'd rather, I'd rather too. have the retribution do the light tackling than sacrifice. If I had one retribution and one curies, I'm not going to sacrifice the curies to do it. I'd rather have the retry do it and have the curies like, dampen. That's the way I, I was. I would still have the Garma or the Dead Devil over uh, in that situation. Daredevil, Boosters, and Bubblers. Bubblers also surface light tackle for obvious reasons. Especially a Saber. Yep. Okay, so let's get into DPS. Good DPS options. It's harder to say. Um, These are kind of like tin pot kind of. You're coming up with crazy fittings. Drekovac, Macarial, uh, Nightmare. Oh, if you're using a nightmare, by the way, you need snakes. Please don't go out with a nightmare and, and not have snakes. I agree. Well, yes, the the implied task there is high grade snakes, but 
Drekovac, Macarial, Nightmare, Oracle. Talos, Brutix, I, I don't know, man. It, it gets a little more complicated mm -hmm. once you once you get into the battle cruisers. Um, battleships is pretty cut and dry. Like you choose fast battleships. Oh, Barghest. Duh. Barghest is a very solid DPS. Um, ship for battleships class. Okay. Yeah, the Tempest would be pretty good. So. Okay, and then support. You're looking at like the Mollus, the Kiris, the Vigil. Celestis. Celestis. Kitsune. Etc. Right. Yeah. You, you got options, right? I'm not, I'm not going to go list off every single, like, E War frigate and cruiser out there. Um, I think a vigil is very, very good in a DPS gang. Mm -hmm. um, it, and to help with light tackle as well, because it can um, actually um, do, it can do as a um, point. Target. It's mainly a target painter ship, the visual, but it's a cracking ship for doing it. Yep, it's it's great. Logi people, people don't mm -hmm. even focus on visuals. Like they just look at them and they're like, okay, I don't care about that. That thing doesn't matter to me. And combat recons. Okay, so that's really what your good nano ships look like. I'm I'm just listing off examples. I don't want to get into every single one of them. So. I think Mini Me prompted this by asking, like, what? No, I don't remember how this got prompted, but that's that's basically the nano ships. Any other questions? Please, not all at once. Just trying to make sure that I follow along at high level. I'm not going to remember every fucking ship name and all that, but yeah, Nano Gang is pretty much. Small fast fleets, opportunistic fights. You're trying to run interference for other folks and counter the blob. Yep. I have one question. Okay. Every raid has a combat and a fleet interceptor. Uh, does it make much of a difference? Yes, it does. Um, I'm trying to remember what the exact difference between them. I think it's a micro warp drive bonus, right? Sleazy. No, both have the eighty percent micro warp drive bonus. What was the difference between the two then? I can't remember off the top. What, of what was the question? He's uh, asking about the different interceptors. Like, which one do you use over the other one? I guess um. I guess just use the faster one. Like, I I don't know the answer off the top of my head. If I had the bonuses in front of me, I could like pull that up and give you a better answer. But uh, you, know, you I can. Mm. I'll just your, say this. Your tackle interceptors will be the ones on the right of the two in the ship tree, the ones on your right. Yeah. Just stiletto and I'm trying to remember the name for the Kaldari one. The Raptor. Raptor. Are going to be usually your Because the one on the right is your is more... I see the one on the right. I oh, know it's the crow. That's the Caldari one. Crow, yeah. I mean, if you just read the bonuses, there, like you see the one that has the the scram and point range bonus. Yeah, you. That's need, gonna be your tackle one. You definitely need the scram and point range bonus because the thing about I think I mentioned this before. There's kind of like a danger zone for when you're in a fight, right? So let me draw my concentric circles again, right? This is like. So, safe, dangerous, safe, and then this is your enemy ship. Okay. Oh, and then dangerous again. Okay. So here's the idea behind this. Let me just draw some arrows. Maybe I want to shrink this down a little bit. Here, give me one second. Okay. 
Okay. Sorry for the bad resolution there, because I just squashed it. Give it gave it a little smush. Okay. So we'll talk about these different ranges again as they apply to nano gangs. I mentioned this before uh, with the transversal stuff. And this. Okay, so the innermost circle right here, this red circle, this is inside scram range. Very dangerous to play inside of scram range, right? They can scram you and then you suddenly lose all of your speed and then they can kill you potentially, right? This second circle is high transversal High transversal, outside, scram, and web. So let's say that's that's your high transversal zone. They're not gonna hit you in there kind of deal. This third red circle, this third red circle is low transversal in range of guns. Okay. And then this last green circle is outside of range of guns. So you're safe when you're outside the range of their guns. You have this no man's land where you have to get maintain high transversal as much as you can because they're going to be in range of you and they're going you're going to have lower transversal just because of the range you're operating at. Then you're going to get into the second green circle that's outside of their scram and web range and you can still tackle them and you're still maintaining a high transversal. And then once you get to like 10 kilometers or less, 11 or 12 if you're fighting certain ships, 10 kilometers or less, you're inside a scram range, right? And you don't want to be inside of scram range, okay? That will get you killed. If you do get scrammed, you basically use your momentum to like slingshot you out of their scram range and then kick on your micro warp drive again, okay? Just remember that. Don't swap your directions if you get scrammed. It's bad, bad juju, okay? So, if you're flying an interceptor, you want to be in that second green circle, right? You don't want to be inside of their scram range. You want to maintain high transversal, etc., etc. So, whatever the ship you're using is, you want to be operating in that second green circle for light tackle, okay? So that's why you want interceptors with longer scram and point range. Okay, that covers that. Any other questions about nano gang? Okay, we're hitting the 38 minute mark. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna try and get this done within 50 minutes. So I got about, well, 50 minutes to an hour. Let's say 20 more minutes and we'll be done, okay? And then we'll get onto the test server and then we'll actually apply what we were talking about. So if you have any questions, please interrupt me right now. I'm just formulating my thoughts on the next topic, which is how to hunt targets, okay? So I think somebody was asking about how do I hunt a target? How do I um, what, find them? What kind of hunting are you talking about? Like Chain hunting. Yeah, so uh, so also hunting. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I left it open ended. In general, because, yeah, I'm going to be talking about it in general yeah. exactly. So I left it open ended as far as the question goes because there's a lot of different types of hunting and the way you approach how do you do hunting is different based on like where you're at. So let's kind of dive into the micro and the macro of it. So there's. There's the micro level and then the macro level. So on the micro level, you're talking about inside your own system. Looking for ratters on sites. ESS is maybe D scan. 
So these are like kind of on the micro level, you're going to be using your D scan. You're going to be looking at the ESSs. Maybe you're going to go there to like provoke a fight. You're going to look for ratters on sites. It's all localized within the system you're in. On the macro level, you're going to be looking at uh, bounty ships destroyed, bounty ticks. You're going to be looking at ESSs from the activity menu or from activity tracker. We're going to look at pilots in space. The last 30 minutes. We're going to be looking at the stellar map. I'll call it the stellar map. So you're going to be looking at the actual map in game. You're going to be looking at who's been destroying how many ships, what the ESSs look like, a couple systems down. You're going to be looking at the pilots in space in the last 30 minutes. So that way you know, oh, there's like maybe three or four people. If there's one person and the ship's destroyed is very high, then you can kind of deduce that there's a marauder or a carrier in that system, etc., etc. right? So you got your micro and your macro level. In the macro level, you're going to be looking at where you're going for your next jump, right? At the micro level, it's like, how am I going to execute that jump, okay? So, so the big big takeaway is the macro, where to next, and on the micro, how to get on grid. So there's kind of like a method to the madness as far as micro is concerned, and then there's a method to the madness as, the, as far as the macro is concerned, okay? Um, I'm not an experienced nullsec ratter. I've never ratted a nullsec uh, on anything beyond a superficial level. Uh, id est I've never ratted in Nullsec. So I used to rat, I used to rat in um, carriers when I was when I lived in Nullsec. Yeah. So Mini Me might be a better resource than I as far as like the macro level, especially as far as like the ships destroyed and what you can expect to see as far as the macro on the map. But on the micro level I'm I'm a little more well versed in that. I know how to do that. Okay. So Typically, the, the way it works is you're going to rely a lot on D-Scan. You're going to rely on your knowledge of what sites people are going to be at. Okay? So, let's take, for example, your Ishtar. Okay, so let's say this is your Ishtar. He's got little drones flying around. Okay, this Ishtar is going to have a certain preference for what sites he's going to engage in. Okay, and Ishtar is going to, generally speaking, be going for sites that he can handle, right? So what sites can an Ishtar handle? Usually, uh, broadly speaking, it's going to be your havens. So, So your Sancha Havens, Sancha, Blood Raiders, Garistas, right? Anything with a Haven in its name is generally speaking where an Ishtar is going to be, right? So you get into a system, right? And you, the first thing you do is you start like sorting, sorting by the sites in the system. If there's like no Havens, okay, well, it's a little bit harder to figure out where that Ishtar is. but that's unrealistic. There's always going to be a haven. So then you start filtering by range, right? Your D scan. So we covered the site bit. Let's cover the D scan bit, right? So you as a ship are localized to this system and you have a D scan radius. Well, in your signatures or anomalies window, right? You see the ranges at which the sites are at, you know the signatures that they're, they're known by. So you are going to essentially start filtering down. Like you see the Ishtar on D-Scan. Well, I just popped into system. I got about 30 seconds before that Ishtar goes, leaves, gets to his station. So you're gonna be working against the clock to kind of figure out where he is as a solo hunter maybe. So you're gonna tighten your D-Scan radius down, okay? 
and you're going to bracket him. So you're going to start at long range, and then you're going to pick a medium range, and then you're going to try and maybe he's not at there. So he's not at the long range, right? Okay, we can cross that off. Let's go to a shorter range. Okay, he's not at the shorter range. Or he is at the shorter range, okay? Well, maybe he's at like a range in the middle of the two, okay? Well, he isn't at a range in the middle of the two. So you now have to like tighten up the range. So maybe he's like at 6 AU. No more, no less, okay? So you're trying to like tighten it down, okay? Well, you see at 6 AU there are three havens, right? So you got uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, and X, Y, Z, right? And each of these is a haven, right? So you'll warp to one or two or three, depending on how many people you got with you. You're going to shotgun out and find him. And if he's on any of those sites, right, you've you've basically taken potentially a list of 20 havens and narrowed it down to a list of like three havens because he's at 6 AU and there's only three havens at 6 AU, right? So you narrowed it down, you warp to the site, and then you catch him. Well, the reason you were able to catch him is because you were able to like bracket him in and then get pick out a site from the list of sites and, and tackle him. So the mechanics of how to get on grid, they're very rushed. It's very, it's a very artistic science. And the faster your warp speed, the more likely you're going to be able to catch an Ishtar off guard. But at the end of the day, catching Ishtars is very hard. So we don't rely on catching Ishtars. Let's look at the macro, okay? So at the macro level, you're looking at what your ships destroyed in the last 24 hours looks like. ESS is from your activity tracker. So let's say you see an ESS in a system, right? And the ESS is ESS equals 100 million, right? 100 million plus. You can be damn sure somebody is ratting in that system in the last couple of hours because you don't get 100 million in bounty ticks like on the ESS without having people ratting. So let's say this right here. desirable uh, desirable system, okay? So you go to the activity tracker, you find the ESSs with a lot of money in them. And even if you don't have anybody on in those systems, you can still go to the ESS, get some money. It, it's worth your time to do that. So look for systems with high ESSs because the, generally speaking, they're going to have a number of pilots doing some form of ratting in that system, okay? Another one. Right, when you when you go into Nullsec, can you look for these systems? Look for the highest um, number uh, red. So the highest number would be zero point nine. It won't be one. So you look at the system. Say for instance, you pick one. Say three dash Q in Tenil. That is a very high ratting area, and where where you'll probably have six or seven people at a time ratting. The ESS value on that is going to be a lot higher than a lower ranked system that's only 0 0.1. Exactly. Uh, that's going to be, the, peop the people are going to choose systems based on the BRM as well. So it's it's good to know if the system has a high BRM. It's a good system for like, checking out, okay? Uh, pilots in space, that's another metric. It's a setting inside of the geography tab on the map. Uh, same thing with ships destroyed. You know, high ships destroyed, high pilots in space means you have a system where people are at, out and actively ratting, right? So if there's pilots in space, like ships destroyed, factors in NPC ships too. It's just not. It's just ships. Period. It is ships, pirates, and police destroyed in the last 24 hours. Is I think the name of the statistic that you're looking for. Yeah. More orange or red means better zone for potentially killing things, right? So. Right. Pilot. I thought it was just player ships. But. Yeah. There's two. I think it's players and then one's for pirates. So pilots in space in the last 30 minutes. That's a very solid indicator of what systems are bumping, what systems are active. I usually use that as my primary heuristic for tracking down people. Um, pilots in space means that somebody is actively out in space and you are going to be able to potentially catch them. Okay. So you go to your map. 
and then you tick off like pilots in space in the last 30 minutes. This gives you like a generalized region of like, okay, there's 15 pilots in space over here. We can probably jump something there. Uh, maybe it's a mining fleet, okay? 15 pilots in space, and then you double check the ships destroyed. Okay, low ships destroyed, maybe like only 100, right, in the last 24 hours. There might be some mining going on there because they're clearly not ratting, and you can double check with the ESS, right? If the ESS is low, the ships destroyed is low, but the pilots in space is high, what does that mean? That means either they're mining or they're staging for something, right? So, you know, you got to put two and two together, start thinking about, like, what on the macro scale you're looking for. Uh, generally speaking, you're looking for places that either have like high bounty ticks or high activity, okay? Any questions about that or any deductions that you might think like, uh, like, I don't know. Just any questions so far on that bit. And please ask Makes them in Alliance General or over voice. Um, in the server i don't have eve open right now it would interfere with my recording right so right then so when you go into these systems and you're looking for them and you're trying to hunt a target in in um null sec as you've got what what um sanderman did with the um, on the other side uh, the main sites are forlorns forsakens and sanctums and the sanctum is the highest rated and forsaken it I can't remember if it's for forlorn or forsaken is the lower point. So most people, in, they'll rat in tengus, they'll rat in um, carriers. I've even known to do sanctums in supers as well. Yeah. The hard bit is actually finding uh, people that are going to rat in carriers these days just because of the costs of them. Uh, tengus are viable and I've seen them around, but usually they're restricted to DED sites. Uh, Generally speaking, Ishtars are honestly like the most used uh, ship for ratting. Ishtars, Gila's, and Marauders now have made a made an entry into it. So they they if use. There's a, if there's a Tengu ratting outside of a DED site, you can bet your ass it's more than likely a Sarnum. Yeah, true. So I, uh, I'd say nine times out of ten, it's an Ishtar. Sorry, I take that back. Seven times out of ten, it's an Ishtar. Two times out of ten, it's a Gila. And the last time, it's a Marauder. You're not going to see a lot aside from that. But that's okay. It, it is what it is. Uh, Pochvin is a little bit different of a story. Um, it's actually a lot easier to find content in Pochvin. The problem is the content bites back in Pochvin. Generally speaking, it's going to be, it's going to be 15 man fleets. Ishtars are currently the meta. So it's going to be one command ship like a claymore or something tw 11 ishtars and then three logis so it's going to be like three scimitars 11 ishtars and a command ship to give them links and that's what the fleet's going to be and they're just going Ooh. they're going in a circle looking for observatory flashpoints because their uh, money caps out at 15 people so they just look for the next observatory flashpoint of which there are only three in Pochvin ever and then they're going to go to that site and like try to run it so if you can catch them in between sites, which it's not hard, Pochvin is a giant triangle. It's it's literally a giant circle for you to just like intercept people on. It's not hard to catch people in Pochvin. But when you go out into Pochvin, you can set up a trap. You can even go onto the site itself. The observatory flashpoint has a warp gate. So you just have a cloaked saber on the site. And then as soon as the fleet warps in, you decloak your saber and then you uh, bubble everything and start killing them, right? So Pochvin, it's a little bit simpler. You get a little bit more fun from what I understand, but uh, you, you don't have to rely as much on these metrics, okay? Uh, wormhole space. On the macro level, it's all about scanning the chain, figuring out who's in chain, and then figuring out who's got eyes and people in chain. Um, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with how we've been doing things in wormhole space. You know, we put out eyes, we kind of keep eyes on structures, we keep eyes on who's in the chain itself, and sometimes you rage roll, right? That's the macro level for wormhole space. Uh, that's about it. I don't have anything else. Any questions? Cool. Let me see. Is that golem still about? I don't know. That's not even in our chain. 
That was oh. rolled off. Oh, never mind. Okay, yeah. back to the lecture. Uh, da, da, da. Can you get into Pachman via filament or like getting lucky with a connection? You can obviously like, go there on purpose, right? But what's a good way for like us to get in there if we want filaments. to try to go do that? 100% is going to be filaments. Yeah. Uh, the number of wormholes that lead into Pachman from wormhole space is very minimal. Uh, you can yeah. get an entrance via case space. It's not hard to hunt them down. But honestly speaking, if you're in case space, you're probably in Jita. And if you're in Jita, you might as well just use a filament for your fleet, right? <laughs> so yeah. the ideal fleet is going to be about 15 people in size. And, you know, we, we can have some fun in Pochfin. I'd be down to have some fun in Pochfin. So I, I'm actually thinking about doing that tomorrow. If anybody's interested, I'll post up like an upcoming fleet announcement for yeah that sounds fun as shit for gauging some fun in Pochfin. we just have to be ready to counter an ishtar gang which means we might have to put a little bit of bling on the line but whatever it's okay get a few kills it'll be fun uh da, 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 da. so what would you do what fleet uh, composition would you do if you went into Pochfin, especially if you were doing against uh an ishtar fleet i'd probably use uh armor ships uh well okay Here's how I would do it, okay? This isn't necessarily the answer to do it, but this is how I would do it, okay? I would use very tanky ships, right, with very good Lodgy. So probably Drekovacs with some Guardians, okay? We put a command ship into the mix to give everybody links, and then throw in a jamming ship and a nuding ship. Uh, the jamming ship would have smart bombs in the highs, and they would get the drones off of you from the Ishtars, right? The nuding ship would take out Scorpion. their... Yeah, the, yeah exactly. The, the nuding ship would have uh, newts in the highs and would take out the enemy Lodgy. And that's what I would hypothetically run in a Pochvin fleet. So it would look something like one Prophecy or one Absolution. Uh, maybe a couple of light tackle and uh, anti-tackle ships in there. So like Rapid Light Legions and uh, Bubbler. But we would bring our own Bubbler. <laughs> uh. We would bring in our own Bubbler. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, we would bring in our own bubbler. As a... We would bring in our own... dude. I'll start muted. Okay, we would bring in our own bubbler as um, as reassurance policy, but ideally because the uh, Pochfin is a triangle, and there's only two gates in any system except for three of the systems. Three of the systems have three gates um, because they have so few gates. It's literally point A to point B. Um, you can just set up bubbles on each of the gates, like drag bubbles, and then just camp your fleet on one of the gates and wait for content to come to you, right? So Pochfin is, is relatively straightforward. You can you can do camping. It's it's not hard. And it would be fun, I think. Um Granted, Marauder fleets do go through Pochfin. They are also like a a major like Fleet nuisance. Yeah, major fleet composition. Generally, paladins. They do, but paladins, yeah, like nesters. Toys, paladins. Yeah, paladins, nesters, and shoot shit. So it's it's like you either get like tiny ships or you get like big ships. So you need to have a sizable gang. You need to be smart about setting up your your um, trap, but otherwise would be fun. Mm. In my experience, is either you can kill what you're about to find, or you're about to get shit on. Yeah, exactly. There's really no in between. Yeah, exactly. Um. But I, I kind of listed off like what my composition was, so that that should have answered the question. Uh, and actually, that's kind of like a nice segue into my next topic. I, I've already been talking about it, but kind of like fleet fights and like what they look like. Um, honestly, I'd rather just get into the test server in order to get to that. But uh, that that pretty much ends like all of the points I want to talk about. I'll finish up this recording, upload it to YouTube. If you got any questions, please ask them now. Otherwise, uh, I'll finish up the recording. Oh, and did that answer your question, Mini Me, as to like what a composition would look like in Pochfin? Yeah, yeah, because I've never done that before. That's the reason why I asked. Yeah, um, if we do go into like the Ishtar uh, Scimitar meta, right? Like we we go in with like fifteen ships of our own, like fifteen Ishtars, low cost, high efficacy. We can run the observatory flashpoints ourselves. Um, I think per tick you're looking at 250 million, 750 million an hour or so. I don't remember.
remember the exact numbers, but I, I think that's what pretty it is. Pretty hot, dude. It, it, it would be uh, pretty cool. It's, it's realistically more like 500 million an hour because you have to warp to and from sites and then you have to factor in dying. Could be fun. Factor in dying. Could also be like absolute hot garbage, but... I'd be interested in doing that. If, if you guys are interested, um, I'll put out the ping. I'll get some people to help us out, and we can we can get a pretty juicy camp going to get a pretty good brawl. I am 100% in for that. That sounds so fun. Okay. Um, no. All right, anyway, thank you, uh, Sandman. I'm going to go AFK for a little while. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So I, I think that should be pretty much everything. It doesn't seem like there's too many questions. I answered most of them. So I'll go ahead and stop this recording. We're just at an hour. So um, good, good. Okay, that's...